Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this series we're making Snake in Unity. In this video we're going to create our snake and handle movement. Let's begin. So we previously did all the setup on our scene, so we can now start to actually build something. The given snake is played on a grid, so let's set up our snake to move along that grid. Now before we do that, let's just resize our elements to make our grid a bit smaller, which will make it easier to see in our game view. So the snake is already correct, it is correctly occupying one unit. Our level area, instead of making it 50 by 50, let's make it just 20 by 20. And just like that, our scene is now a bit smaller, which will make it easier and more simple. So let's begin by making a new class to handle our snake. So we'll get into the scripts folder and create a new C-sharp script and name it snake. Okay, so again, the game is played on a grid. Now in here, for our snake to move along the grid, we need to first know where it actually is. So we need to store a X and Y position. So let's store a private, we want to store a grid position and we're going to use a vector to int. Call it grid position. A vector to int is exactly like a vector to, except it uses ints instead of floats, which is perfect for a grid position. So now in here, let's do a private void awake. And on awake, let's initialize the grid position. Let's put it in the middle of the grid, so on 10, 10. Okay, and now on our private void update, let's actually move the transform to the correct location based on the grid position. Since we set the grid to have a size of one, the transform position will perfectly match our grid position. So in here we simply do, so just like that, we are positioning our snake correctly. Okay, so let's go back into the editor, and now let's drag our script onto our snake game object, and let's run the code and see if our snake appears right in the middle of our level. Yep, there it is, there's the snake right in the middle. Okay, great. Now back to the code. Let's add the ability to move our snake using the keyboard. So on our update, before we set its position, let's do a if input.getKeyDown of keycode.up arrow. So this returns true on the frame when we press our up arrow. So if we press up, we simply change the grid position, dot y, and the y increases as you go up. So we simply increase it by one. So let's see if our snake moves up when we press the up arrow. There it is in the middle, and if I press up, yep, there you go, it increased by one position on the grid. Okay, let's add all the other directions. Okay, there it is, I can move up, I can move left, right, and down. Okay, so we got all movement directions correctly working. Now in the actual game of Snake, the movement is automatic and not when you press keys. So let's deal with that. Essentially, we want the grid position to change automatically every certain amount of time. So to do that, let's create a variable to count the time. So we define a private float and we're going to call this the grid move timer. This will contain the time remaining until the next movement. And let's also define a variable to hold the time between moves, so a private float grid move timer max. This will contain the amount of time between moves. So here on our wake, we set the grid move timer max to be at 1f, so we want our snake to move along the grid every one second, and we set the grid move timer to be the grid move timer max. So every second, our snake will move along the grid. So on the update, let's increase the grid move timer by time.delta time. Time.delta time contains the amount of time that has elapsed since the last update. So after we increase it, we want to test if grid move timer, if it is bigger than grid move timer max. If it is, then it has been one second since the last time we moved, so we want to move again. So now obviously we need to know where exactly we're going to move it towards which means we need a variable to store the move direction. So let's go all the way up here, make a new private, again, a vector to int. This will be the grid move direction. Now on awake, let's set it a default to one zero. So by default, all our snake will be moving to the right. And on update, when we are inside here, we're going to increase the grid position by the grid move direction. And obviously after we move, we need to reset the move timer. So we take the move timer and we reduce it by the grid move timer max. So the code in here will run exactly once per second. 
All right, so let's test and see if our snake is indeed moving to the right every second. Okay, there's a snake and yep, moving to the right, to the right, to the right every second. Okay, great. Now let's apply this to our keyboard input, which again, we are not directly modifying the grid position, but rather in here, we are setting the grid move direction. So if I press up, I set the grid move direction dot Y to be one and on the X to be zero. So let's do the same for all the others. Okay, so all of the directions are set up. When we press the up arrow, we modify the move direction. We set the X on the zero since we are moving up and we set the Y to plus one. Same thing for all the others, so let's see. Okay, there's a snake moving to the right. Now if I press up, yep, there you go. He's now moving up. Now I press left and now he's moving to the left. So as you can see by pressing the keyboard keys, I can now change the direction that the snake is moving. Now there's still one thing which is different from the game, which is we can go back to where we came from. So here I'm going up, now I press down, and you can see that I can go down. This is not intended, so let's fix it. So here on the update, after we test for the input, we're only going to modify our direction if we can actually modify our direction. So in here, for example, when pressing up, we can only go up if we are not currently going down. So in here, we check if the grid move direction if it's different from minus one, then we are not going down. If we are going down, then we cannot go directly up. The same thing on the down arrow. We can only go down if we are not currently going up. So let's apply this to the rest. Okay, so let's see. There's a snake going to the right, press up, and now it's going up, press left, and it's going to the left. Now if I press right, and yep, nothing happens because I cannot go right, but I can go down. And now if I press up, yep, I cannot go directly up. I have to go first to the right and then I can go up. Okay, great. All right, so now that we have our basic movement set up, let's clean this code a bit. We're going to put all the input code in its own function. So in here, make a private void handle input. We're going to copy all of our input code in there and on update, we call that function. And then let's also copy this code into a private void handle grid movement and call this in here. And let's also copy the transform.position and put it on the grid movement. Okay. So here on our update, we are first handling our input, which checks for all the keyboard inputs. And then we do the handle grid movement, which does the time check and then finally moves the transform. Now in here, the one issue we still have is our sprite is not currently being rotated. So our snake is always pointing up despite the direction that it's going. So in here, when we move, we want to also rotate it to face the grid move direction. So here's a function that takes a vector to int and returns a float. It simply does some math to get the angle. And here when working in 2D, you can see our rotation here. These are our Euler angles. And in 2D, the only one we modify is the Z. So in here we modify the transform dot Euler angles, make a new vector three, put it on zero zero, and then we modify the Z. And for the Z, let's get the angle from the vector and give our grid move direction. And just like that, it should be working. The one issue is the sprite is drawn facing upwards, whereas in Unity, a zero is facing to the right. So if you run the code, you can see pointing to the right and it's pointing up and there and there and there. So let's simply change that. We could redraw the sprite or simply change in here and do this. And just like that, it's pointing to the right, now I move up and now the snake is pointing up and pointing to the left and down. And again, if it's moving down, I cannot go straight up. And if I'm going straight to the left, I cannot go straight right, but I can move in every direction. So there you have it. We took our starting scene and began creating our game. We set up the snake along with input controls and movement according to our game design. In the next video, we're going to spawn some food and add the ability for the snake to eat it. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.